As Europe was preparing to burn down again with the rise of fascist Italy and Spain's prelude to civil war, Britain looked through its air force and realized that their fighter wings were in need of modernization. The Hawker Fury, the then-current mainline fighter since the early 1930s, was beginning to show its age, and with the events of the Soviet I-16's first flight and the Italian CR-32's entering into service, the Air Ministry drafted up and then put out Specification F-730. Specification F-730 would be the origins for both the Spitfire and the Hawker Hurricane's long and involved developmental process. But Gloucester did not initially respond to the specification as they were in the development of the Gauntlet, an interwar biplane that satisfied an earlier Air Ministry specification. The specification in summary called for a plane with at least four machine guns, high speed, and usage of the Rolls-Royce Gossack engine then in development. That last part would be the source of many headaches for designers as the Gossack was developed to use evaporative cooling and would be subject to many technical delays and complications that eventually led to its replacement by the Merlin engine. While Rolls-Royce was still trying to cling to hope for the Gossack and trying to get it to work, Gloucester was still in the final development phase for their gauntlet. They soon realized, however, that with a few tweaks, they could transform the gauntlet into a worthwhile design to fulfill the specifications the Ministry had put forth. So, for much of late 1933 into spring of 1934, Gloucester put to work designing and prototyping an improved version of the gauntlet. Flying on September 12th of 1934, the first flight proved the merit of Gloucester's choice as it was an unmitigated success. However, the Ministry's evaluation was skeptical, as they had lacked confidence in the ability for a plane with a radial engine to reach the specified speed requested, believing only a inline engine like the Gosshawk could provide enough horsepower for such speeds. But, after lots of trials, the Ministry was satisfied with the Gladiator, and ordered a production run, becoming operationally ready in 1937 just as the Spanish Civil War was kicking off and the prelude to the Winter War was heating up. Though a biplane, the Gloucester Gladiator was respectably fast thanks to many incorporated technologies and construction techniques such as wing construction methods pioneered by Hawker. Being powered by a 700 horsepower Bristol Mercury radial engine, it could achieve a top speed of 253 miles per hour at 14,000 feet. This ability was supplemented by a fully enclosed canopy, which was an incredible rarity for the time of the Gladiator, with landing flaps that also made bringing it down a near-trivial task, helped by its very forgiving handling making it a favorite among new pilots. Entering into service in 1937, Gloucester would end up producing a total of 750 Gladiators, which would see a surprisingly large number of operators beyond the Royal Air Force, who used them as trainers after the adoption of the Hawker Hurricane later the same year. The Commonwealth, however, would see a great many gladiators in its hands throughout the war when hurricanes and spitfires were in low supply, many of them being used as interceptors to break up incoming bombers, which seemed to be a very natural task to the gladiator throughout its service life. In North Africa, the gladiator would serve such people as South African pilot Pat Paddle from No. 80 Squadron. Pat would manage to score 15 victories, 4 probables, and 6 damaged in the Gloucester Gladiator, and would go on to have a very successful career ending with over 50 personal victories. Most of these early victories in the Gladiator would be against aircraft of the Regia Aeronautica of Fascist Italy, including CR-32s and 42s, SM-79s, and other similar aircraft that the Gladiator had a competitive edge with despite its old design. In Finland, gladiators would be flown against the Soviets during the Winter War and later Continuation War, humiliating the VVS with astronomical losses despite them holding a numerical supermajority over Finland's small air force. Despite Finland only able to ever operate a small fleet of gladiators, they stacked up favorably against Soviet I-16s and I-15s and proved effective against SB-2 and TB-3 bombers. Meanwhile, back in the Mediterranean, the Gladiator's most famous moment was yet to come, its defense of the island of Malta against the Regia Aeronautica. A handful of sea gladiators, of which only about six were serviceable at any one time, flew valiantly against Italian bombers for weeks on end during the Siege of Malta. Three gladiators would acquire the names Faith, Hope, and Charity by the newspaper after the fact, becoming the legend of the Hellfar fighter flight, which would become popular after the war, with Faith, number 5520, even surviving the war and becoming a part of the National War Museum in Malta as part of it. On that note, nine other surviving airframes exist today, with two of those still flying in the UK. Aside from Finland and the Commonwealth, the Gladiator would also serve in Belgium, China, Egypt, Free France's colonies, Iraq, Greece, 
Ireland, Latvia, Lithuania, Norway, Portugal, and Romania. In all of these cases, the gladiator found a niche in aerial defense, often flying against vast numbers of bombers and doing surprisingly good despite being antiquated. Even if it was only an intermediary step between the Hawker Fury and Hurricane, the gladiator was a welcome sight to the likes of Finland and Malta during their darkest hours. And for an interwar biplane, one that was constantly thrown into battles that had no expectation to win yet did so? That's no insignificant feat.